All right, before this video starts, this is just a quick shout out to George at Go Bob Limited. Now, George isn't actually a sponsor of the channel, but he has helped us out a lot. So it's only fair that we try and return the favor and push a little bit of work his way. Links in the description, I highly recommend him. It's about right. Take me A-team cap off. Right. Service time. Right. We're back at Go Bob's. This place. It was where we did uh, all this tray and all this work here. Uh, I think it was early on, middle of last year, I think it was. Uh, but obviously, I did remember you had a ramp, so it's time to do a service on this van. And I'd, I'd rather do it myself because I just think it's. I think there's something very satisfying about just getting dirty and just doing it yourself. So that's that's today's effort. The other one I actually need to service because they've both got about the same mileage on. So, but I can only drive one van at a time. So I've got to do this one, and then that one will come back at some point. I don't know, next month. I haven't broken that to George yet. These are cool little ramps. You know the days of like the big four-poster ramps. These take up half of a workshop. It's not anymore, these tiny little ramps, and they're, they're good for three ton. I mean, four posters do have some advantages over these ones, but for, for the most part, these do just as well. I am secretly hoping this will hold. This is a tool kit. Ah, all right. With all the nine, 10. You got uh, a 10 mil socket as 10 well? 10 mil sockets in there. there That's a rarity. Go, Top hey. man. You know. Normally, when you get a socket set, you just take the 10 mil and just throw it into the water the sun because you're going to lose it at some point. I'm a bit like James May. I could sit here for two hours polishing all of them. This one's Henry, this one's Steve, and this one's Jeremy. I was going to do this as a job once upon a time. I'm kind of glad I didn't now. It would have taken the fun out of it, but it's quite nice. It's just a hobby. It's, uh, it's quite nice. Ah, oh, those are the safety things it's hitting, isn't it? What's that? The, um, those, the clunking, that's the... Yeah, so you don't have it landing fucking bonnet. I remember when I reviewed this van, I didn't like this bit. Right, okay. Yeah, she's done 10,000 miles, so she's due for a... The book says it needs to be done every 20, every 25. It's every 25 or every two years, but um, I'm not a lover of, I'm not a believer in that whole long distance servicing. Oh, fucking underguard. I'm gonna take those off and throw those in the bin. Right, give me two minutes, let me get set up. We're back in a bit. Ah, after all of that, I've forgot a drain plug, the uh, French drain plug keys. You get them on the packs of four, so I've got to go down to Halfords now to go and pick up a set, probably for about 50 quid. But we got to go in this, which is quite fun. So, it's not all loss. That's the ones, lovely job. Lovely, take care, ta. But we've got keys. This is dangerous. You got insurance, yeah? <laughs> Hello everybody, my name's Tom. I'm your Uber driver today. DS, yeah? yeah. All right. Yeah, let's, uh, let me just, uh, for the full effect. All right, here we go, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, here we go. That's it, that'll do, that's better. Yeah, see all this hard work as an electrician will pay off. One day I'll be able to have something like this, rather than a van. I was expecting it to be all sort of and growly, but it's not, it's actually, it's really, yeah, it's really, it's really normal and just refined. And, but it's a smooth drive, isn't it? Fuck. <laughs> it's really weird. Then it goes back to just being a, like a quiet pussy cat, you know? Oh, I thought my van was quick. That's the thing, you get used to driving stuff every day. You just get used to the feel of how something drives and then you get something different like this. And it's, what MPG do you get out of this? Just out of curiosity. Averaging 12. 12. <laughs> okay. Has this got a stop start or not? Yeah, it does. Oh, it has? Okay. Ah, okay. But this actually works a lot more effectively. Than the Renault traffic does. Yeah, the, the stop start on... So it's instantaneous. Yeah, stop start on the Renault traffic is not very effective. I, I can report. In fact, I think both of us can report that, can't we? It's not, uh, it's not a good system. Fuck. It just doesn't get boring, that's the problem. I mean, it's some machine, all right. It is a bit of a sort of drug dealer's car, I've got to be honest. It's like if, you know, if this turned up outside your house, you'd think the cartel's in town sort of thing, you know? It does have that sort of presence. Lynn's like, bloody boys. Some machine, blimey. Don't worry, van. 
I have loads of these. Every time I service a van, I buy them. It's that one. Eight mil square nut for anybody. That's what you'll need. This is what I like. If you've got the time and the, the space somewhere to do it, it's actually quite, it's a, a nice job. It's, there's no rush, there's no stress. It's just, you just do it sort of thing and it's all right, which is why I don't mind doing it. It's just a nice, you know, I mean, as sad as it was to admit, I actually got up this morning and I was like, ah, let's go do this today. It's actually, yeah, it's quite cool. When you're doing it on a driveway and it's pissing down with rain and you know, you lose your 10 mil socket in the gravel, it's, it's a different story, but Right, you won't feel a thing. Now, these are a bit tight for me. Okay, loosen. Right, now I've got everything, haven't I? Yes. My van is a virgin, it's not had this done before. Yeah, I was having this conversation with George earlier, and one of the reasons I wanted to do it myself as well, if you take your van, I mean, if you take your van to Renault, I guess, yeah, they'll, they'll just fit the correct grade of oil and yada yada. But if you take it somewhere like, if you take it somewhere like Halfords Auto Center or Quick Fit or any sort of quickie lube or something, you don't actually know, you know, you, you, the service costs you like 60 quid. I actually priced it for this van at Halfords. Uh, Halfords Auto Center was 60 quid. And if you want the fully synthetic oil, which is what this needs, you pay an upgrade of 40 quid. But the problem is when you take the van to the service center, you've paid for that premium upgrade to have put the better oil in, but you don't, you don't actually know they've put it in. And there's so many, you can Google, I mean, YouTube, there's so many things of like hidden camera things in garages where they just put, the, they just put, you paid for the upgrade and they just put any old shit in your engine. It's just, you know, in the back of every Halfords Auto Center or any sort of quickie loop, there's two drums, one with 1040 and one with 530. And that's it, you know? So you kind of wonder what you're getting for your money, which is the other reason I like doing it myself. I mean, I'm not fitting, you know, it's not a fantastic bag, it's just cheap. It is a cheap shit. Shut up, I can see him laughing. But if you're changing it every, that's a 530 fully synthetic. I mean, it's triple QX, it ain't nothing special. But if you're changing it every 10,000, I don't see what the issue is, you know? It's, I mean, the service schedule on this is every 25,000. I like to do it every 10, just because I think it's good practice. It doesn't hurt to do it. All right, one of the things I like to do on the channel is talk about the difference in quality, okay? You see, George is a man of, you know, taste and caliber, and he knows good quality blue roll when he sees it, which is why his blue roll, it looks like blue roll, yeah? You can see where I'm going with this, just normal blue roll. You see, I'm always a sucker for a deal, and then I realized actually it was a bit of a crap deal, and I was actually just, I was fucked over. Because then you look at my blue roll, and you realize actually what a load of, shite it is because you buy it thinking and it, they sell it like oh it's 200 meters on a roll and you think oh awesome it's not i mean it's just garbage but even saying as simple as you wouldn't think there's a difference in saying as simple as blue roll but there really is you look at the difference and all right he probably paid twice what i paid but that's just <laughs> it's just better so yeah that's all right that was an amazon special actually that blue roll should have fucking thrown it back at them to be honest all right it's time to take off this virginal oil filter in all these years, they've not designed a less messy way of doing this, really. Okay. Yeah, I mean, doing this every day would get a bit dull, I, I'll be honest, but just once every, you know, once every so often is quite therapeutic in a sort of weird way, you know? I think it's the same as doing an MOT on a car. Once you've done it once, you've done them all. Same as an EICR on a house. Right, we need our oil filter. Just that one here. This is the moment we find out it's the wrong filter. No, that looks like the, the right one. Alan Farmer. There we go. It's our new seal. That goes back on. That'll be next. Try and make a bit of an effort, clean all the old shit out. Cut. Yeah, you do get through gloves quickly, I'll be honest. Yeah, on the old traffic, the one that you saw at me servicing last year, fucking smallest gloves in the world. That one had, I did, doing this method of servicing where I just service every 10,000. That one did just under a quarter of a million miles before I got rid of it. And it was still running at that point, and it was running fine. That done a quarter of a million miles on that engine. Original injectors, original chain, original cylinder head, everything. You know, I hadn't actually, the engine was one part of it. I hadn't, didn't have to do anything with. Original turbo, all of it was, you know. And it did a quarter of a million miles. I was bombing around London, you know. It was, so it does go to show that if you just... Sorry, these gloves are so fucking small. It does make you, it does show if you do make an effort to, to just go a little bit above and beyond, it does make a difference. Because this van's the same. This one's got a longer service interval, it's every 25,000. 
and you think, I mean, I, I guess the boffins at Renault have, you know, that when they say it was every, it's every 25,000 or two years, that's, that's a bare engine on a bench in a lab being, you know, and they're testing it in cycles or something and they've, they've managed to do the math and it works out that they can get, they can squeeze this engine to do 25,000 miles before a service. But the problem is, it was like I said last time, everybody looks at that and they do, when you buy this van, they do sell, that's how they sell it, it's every 25,000. But the reality is for most people, nine out of 10, it's actually less than that, you know. I'm doing this every 10,000 just because it's, I just think it's good practice. And the last van did quarter of a million miles with that attitude of servicing, so. So I think there is some validity to that argument, you know. I find on these, because they're all plastic fittings, just do it up till it's tight, till the your socket doesn't move any further, and just a little nip more, and that's it. You don't need to go sort of gang-gang style on them, because they don't appreciate it at all. You should, every time you change the oil, the sump plug, that wash of the copper ring, you're supposed to change it, but you can cheat if you turn it upside down and you can get another, you can get another cycle life out of it. Because otherwise they just, they drip. They're kind of a one time only thing. Okay. And the same again, these are only aluminium. So I just tie it up till it's hand tight and then just, just a fraction more and that's it. Gotta put all these covers back on. Uh, all right, I was debating whether I should bother no, refit them, Tom. Fuck's sakes, do it properly. Every car I've ever owned, they've always been second hand and they've never had these because they've blown off on the motorway or something. That's it, right. Yeah, I took it in to get a new set of tyres a minute ago because I don't, well, it's done about 12,000 on those original tyres. Well, yeah, I fitted them for new, so it's done 12,000 or 10,000, what am I saying? 12,000. I think I overinflated that one because centre. If you overinflate them, you wear out the center quicker. And if you underinflate them, it's the edges. And I think I overinflated it. So that one on the right hand side was, it was right on the tread limit. And the other one was all right, but I was like, oh, fuck it, just replace both. I've got a bit of a thing about when you replace tires, replace them as pairs. I'm gonna be brand new caterpillars, dirty. That does remind me, actually, there's a couple of people asking, asking me to do a, because I, I ended up replacing all my clothing, you know, the old orange clothing with the orange bands and stuff, I ended up replacing it all. And there were a couple of people asking me, what's it like? Um, I will do a video just on, I'll do a little Friday video, just talking about it. Cause some of the stuff I actually really like and some of it I dislike. So I'll go through it and I'll, uh, I'll tell you all about it. But I do like it overall. It's very good quality clothing. I like it. Not being paid, all right? It's just an opinion. I used to own, back in the day, down when I was living down in Devon, we used to own, I had Shogun's, Pajero's, that sort of thing, four wheel drive trucks, Range Rovers and had one it was a shogun and it was a three liter v6 and for anybody who's owned one you'll know that uh the heads on them are very weak a three liter v6 lovely motor quick not as quick as that audi but it's a yeah it's a quick truck for, for what it is um god i can strip one of those down to the head pretty much with my eyes <laughs> my eyes blindfolded you just, uh, if you take your time, they're nice engines to work on, actually. I'm not sure I'd like to work on these sort of engines, these more modern things. I'm not sure I quite like the older stuff. Yeah, I had numerous cars in my, I had numerous motors, mostly four-wheel drives and trucks. I had a P38 Range Rover. In fact, I've got a picture of it. I'll leave it on the screen now. Beautiful truck when it ran properly. It's kind of like an Alpha in that brief moment where it runs correctly. It's the best car in the world. The problem is 98% of the time it doesn't run right. Right, that's done. We can lower it. Yeah, and I had this, uh, so we've just lowered it just so I can put the oil back in. Yeah, I had a variety of cars. I had a P38, beautiful wagon when it was running right. And uh, a mate of mine bought it. <laughs> he bought it for three grand. This is an absolutely true story. Bought it for three grand in Western Supermare and it broke down on the way home. He bought it, broke down on the way home. So the, the guy who was selling it didn't answer his phone. Or no habla, no habla, put the phone down. So he got it relayed home, RAC or whatever it was. He spent, trying to get it all running right, he spent, I think, must have been another three, something like another three grand trying to get it running right. Couldn't get it running right. Sold it, I swear to God, I'm not lying. Sold it to me for 900 quid. I thought, bargain, this is, <laughs> I can't go wrong here. I then spent another, probably another four grand trying to get it, and we just, get, we, we plowed, it must have been over 10,000 quid into that truck. We just couldn't get it running right. They're just beautiful trucks, but, very temperamental. 
Yeah, I've put the filler plug back in, yeah. I've been there and done that before. You start filling it and all just pisses out the bottom. I had a long wheelbase Shogun. That was a 2.5 diesel. I had a Mitsubishi Shogun short wheelbase, 2.8 manual. It was quite rare, it was a manual gearbox. Nice truck, actually it was one of my favorites. I really liked it. I scrapped it. Fucking idiot, I should know it was a mistake. Then I got a 2.8 long wheelbase automatic. That was nice, I pimped that right out for off-roading. I've got a picture of it actually, I'll leave it up here now. That was a couple of years ago. Then I had a three litre V6, long wheelbase, temporarily. Then went back to a Mark I, the Mark I Shogun, the proper lovely square, I think they're so, ah, oh, they're so nice. The Mark I Shoguns, the really square with the big truck star mirrors. That was a 2.5 diesel. Slow, but it was a really nice truck. I bought that in an auction for 250 quid or something, 210 quid, down at Hussey's, down in Exeter. All that was wrong with it is it wouldn't start. Uh, it needed four new glow plugs and then it, it fired up. I did it in the car park at Hussey's. I got there with a trailer expecting to tow it home. Didn't need to, put four new spark plugs in it, fired up. I think the owner was kicking himself. Then I had a Jeep Cherokee. Had a, that was, uh, I had, that was the, the early model, the square sort of boxy one, four litre straight six. Probably one of the nicest trucks I had, the Jeep. Jeep Cherokee, four litre straight six. I think that engine is renowned for in the off-roading world as being one of the best engines. It's just, that was a bomb-proof engine. Thirsty, but it was, that was a quick motor as well. Not quite as quick as that Audi earlier, but it was, for, for the size and lump of it, very quick, very quick truck. What did I have after that? It's a repertoire of every vehicle I've owned. That's right, that was when I was dating Driftwood and I gave her the truck just to get around my life. That was right. So yeah. And I remember I didn't sell it. Yeah, I gave it to my now ex-girlfriend. That was a bid to get her out of my life. There's the keys. <laughs> you drive away. That was the last time I saw her, actually. Bitch. What are we going with? About eight litres? Do you know I'm going to look it up, actually. I overfill it. I'm not lifting this fucker up again. 20 minutes later. Seven, seven and a half litres. Okay. Yeah, and then I had, after that Cherokee, I had... I had a very temporary phase where I got the Jeep Grand Cherokee. That was... Uh, that was the 4.7 litre V8. That was very nice. Uh, but I only had that for a few weeks because it wasn't mine. I was just driving it for a friend while they were, I can't remember what it was now. A couple of weeks I had it. Then I had Fiat Punto. I had a little Fiat Punto, but there's a story behind that. Um, <laughs> yeah, a little Fiat Punto I had. Uh, it was just, a, it was after, um, after my ex, she, moved out and I bankrupted myself, yada, 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 you know, pain and despair. And I got a cheap motor, it was a little Fiat Punto. So I guys, no word of a lie. I booked it into a garage. It had to have something, to, I can't even remember, it was head gasket, I think, or something. And they gave me a courtesy car and that Punto had a four speed box and I never thought anything of it. Or was it a five, it, had, it was a four speed or a five speed. I can't remember what it was now. And that was the way it always was. I never questioned it. And I booked it into the garage because it kept, that was it, it kept losing water, the head gasket had gone. And I booked it into this garage down in Exeter and they gave me this courtesy car, which had a six speed gearbox. And you know how you adjust to a car over a couple of days, it's a different feel, you know? And I was driving it and it had a six speed box. Didn't think anything of it and I was using it. And a couple of days, two or three days went by and my car, the, the Punto was fixed. And I dropped it, I dropped this courtesy car back and I picked up my Punto and I drove away. And of course, you adapt to the car that you've just been driving. And I, because I, I was living in, uh, I'd moved in, up to Torquay at that time. I had to, I was driving up, I was driving up the A38 towards Torbay. And uh, of course, went one, two, three, four, five, went to put it in six, and it fucking went in. I said, <laughs> somebody had put a five speed knob on a, on a six speed gearbox. So the, the gear knob had come off or something, and they just fitted a, a five speed knob. And I'd been driving around for months thinking it was a five speed box. It wasn't, it was a six speed box, just somebody had fitted. <laughs> and it was one of those moments I'd put it in six. What the fuck? What's going on here? Yeah. Then I had a Peugeot Boxer. That was my first van when I started working for myself. That was a Peugeot Boxer, a little 1.9 diesel, slow as fuck. Gearbox went on it. Sold it. I bought it for 1100 and sold it for 300 Then I had a transporter, VW Transporter T5. That was quite nice. That was a, it wasn't very nice when I gave it back to them, but it was nice when I got it. And then after that, I got the Renault Traffic, which is what you saw me doing the last service on. Then I got these ones. That's it. That's my repertoire of vehicles. It's quite varied. Then, of course, I got into bikes. I started with a, I had a Yamaha Thundercat. That's a nice bike. Good beginner's bike, actually, if you first dabble into, you know, sports bikes. 
that was a good bike. And then I moved up to a Honda Fireblade. It's the classic, so I've still got it actually, it's down at my parents down in Devon. Uh, yeah, that's a, it was a classic Fireblade, I've got a picture of it, I'll leave it on the screen here, beautiful bike, absolutely stunning piece of engineering. Nelly often says, why don't you sell it? I don't want to sell it because it's, it's, I don't know, I'm really attached, you know how you get really attached to something and it's just like that one there, you just get really attached to it and you don't want to, you don't want to get rid of it, it's just, you've got no purpose whatsoever to keep it, but it's just that it has some sort of value to you and that Fireblade was, I actually, I stripped it down. I know why it's got, me and my dad rebuilt it together, which is why it's got some sort of, it's got an emotional attachment. And then I got the Ducati, which is what you see me doing the motor vlogs on now with the camera guy. Now, this van's done 12,000. What color do you think this air filter is gonna be when it comes out? I'm going with black. That's normally the color for London. That's not too bad, actually. I was expecting worse than that. That's not, you know, Nissan, General Motors. Half these bits are all shared between other manufacturers. They're all shared, they're all, a lot of cars, I mean, people say, ah, oh, you know, Renault's a shit brand and you've got to buy Nissan or you've got to buy, they all share the same parts, you know, they're all, half the, they're made in the same, they roll off the same factory line. Welcome to aftermarket. Get used to it, Van, because it's all you're going to fucking get. Yeah, tires, that was what I wanted to talk about. This video might be a bit long, but it's a Friday video, so it doesn't matter. Um, I put on a set of, uh, the, say, the front tires wore out and I had to get a new set. And there was a choice. I could get, you get like branded ones like Michelin, Dunlops, you know, you could get the good stuff for about 150 quid a tire. And then I saw these ones for 70 quid and I was like, ooh, you know, that could be a good, good bargain. And I bought them. But it does make you wonder. I mean, on a, if you're in like a high performance car like that S8, I get it. You've got to spend the money and you've got to have, you can't have a beautiful car like that and then go and put some Ching Chong Pong tires on. You've got to actually buy the good stuff, you know. But on a van, you know, it's just tootling around London. I mean, is there really a difference between, you know, because these are 100 XL tires, heavy load tires. Is there really a difference in, you know, for vans and stuff where, where performance isn't a key aspect? Does it? I mean, I guess wet, in the wet, the stopping distance will probably be longer on these by about 20 miles or something, I guess. I don't know. I'm just saying on the Ducati, on the bikes and stuff, you, I mean, you've got to buy, you buy the best you can afford. But... You know, on commercial vans, I guess. I mean, I guess it does matter. I don't know. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll keep you posted. I'll let you know how they go. They'll probably wear out quicker, I'd have thought. But we'll see. Oh, fuck, I love this. Just having everything here. Six grand a month, the rent on this unit. All this here. And then upstairs, that bit there, is an office. And there's a little, um, there's two toilets, ladies and gents toilets, and a little sort of reception waiting room. Six grand a month, big money. But that's where I'm heading. I want a slice of that pie. I was going to get somewhere last year, but in the end I decided to hold off. And good, I mean, probably a good job I did actually because of Corona. Shit. <laughs> that age old thing where you finish putting a car back together and you've got spare bolts. I had a. <laughs> that, that V6, the three litre V6 Shogun I had. I had, uh, I had to take the engine apart for various reasons. I had to take it apart about six times. I'm learning, I, I was learning. I didn't know I took it apart to do a head gasket change. I fucked up the head gasket change and it blew again. So I had to take the head off again and yada, yada, yada. And anyway, every time I put the engine back together, there were bolts left over and the pile was growing. <laughs> by, the time, by the time I put it together for the sixth time, there were like substantial bolts that were missing <laughs> and I couldn't work out where they were for. And uh, yeah, I sold the vehicle, obviously. Got rid of it sharpish. Right, you're no longer a virgin. I've molested you. Right, put it all back. Let's see if I've got the mystical 10 mil spanner. The socket, I should say. It's 20, flathead, 10 mil. Right, that went back in. Actually, it was a 13, that was a 10. Back in there. Clean these leaves out and uh, pack up and piss off, I think. Yeah, there's a Caterpillar trousers. I got two types, a thin type and a thick type. These are the thin ones. I do like them. They're really, really good. Shoes, I'm actually wearing DMs at the moment because my... The caterpillar ones are my nice ones. Uh, it's a long story. I have bad knees and the caterpillar ones, it's a long story. Uh, the t-shirts are really good. I actually prefer them over the ones which have the orange bands because they, um, they don't itch. These ones don't itch at all for some reason. They're really good. That is quite satisfying, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah. It's like instantly clean. You haven't even really got to brush it. You just keep doing it with that and there's, it just like this, the dirt just lifts, lifts yeah. off. Yeah, that's very satisfying. 